Hi well, my friends, how you all doing? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a fresh episode of our City Zoo Build Tropical Wings Zoo. So here we are my friends, time for a brand new episode of Tropical Wing Zoo. Yes, it's your favourite Planet Zoo series. I know that already, okay my friends, but anyway, in case you've missed last episode, it is linked above for you right now. It was our Aardvark and Meerkat Hab build. Be sure to go and check that one out before cracking on with today's if you've not yet seen it. I had loads of positive feedback though on the episode, you all seem to really like the habitat, which is absolutely amazing. That's what I strive to do, is please you, please me, make the best zoo possible. But uh, we've got another big episode coming up today, brand new Hab, I'm going to throw it out there now, I haven't got everything done, but we are going to be talking about what happens next in today's episode, so I guess we can touch upon all the stuff that's not been done right there, but uh, I'm not going to hold off any further, you want to see what I've been up to. Let's do this. So here we are, my friends. We are at the entrance of Tropical Wing Zoo. I know I give it away in the title. I know I give it away with the thumbnail, but we always start here. That's just how it is, okay? It's just how I roll. Now, as far as the rest of the zoo's concerned, I've not really been touching any of it. I've not really done any work to it. I've been doing loads of work on Adventure Africa. That's the thing that's been taking all of my attention for the past um, week or week and a half, whatever it is, since I uh, uploaded the last episode. Um... We're going to be talking a lot about Adventure Africa today, especially in the what happens next. I'm going to kind of prep you for what's going to be coming up in the next couple of episodes as well. But before we do all that, we're going to do the showcase. We're going to be looking at everything that yours truly has been up to. Um, you're going to see some bits. They're going to look really unfinished, and I can only apologize for that. Um, the actual hab itself is probably at about 85, 90% done. It's all the little bits that I haven't got around to doing. Essentially, I've just run out of time again, ladies and gents. It's a busy time on the channel now we're not just uploading planet zoo there's lots of different series going on uh which for me i really enjoy because it means we've got a bit of variety on the channel um so yeah i've just not really been working all that much what i'm going to do though in a couple of weeks time is we're going to have a week on the channel where we only upload planet zoo videos i've got a few one-off builds i've got some how-to's and i've got some uh i've got some let's build togethers like in in waiting but because of all the other videos that are going out on the channel i've just kind of put them to one side but yeah give it a couple of weeks and it'll be Planet Zoo only for one week only. But anyway, let's crack on. Now we're just going to flip around, ladies and gents, because that's what we do, because we're, we're, we're talking all things Adventure Africa in today's episode, uh, especially the Gem Gemsbok Hab build, which is what we're going to be looking at um, extensively in today's episode, because that's the brand new build, it's the brand new animal. Um, and the more I, I look at certain things, the more it reminds me that actually I need to finish stuff off, and I've not yet done it. And uh, also need to add some new bits and bobs. And I've not done them either, but it is what it is. Now, the hyena habitat, still haven't got round to updating that the way I want to um, and upgrading it. Um, I am going to get round to it because the more I've built out, the more that that yellow sandy rock doesn't really work with the rest. So the colour needs to change it and we need to throw some real rocks in there and take some fake rocks out. And then I think that habitat will look absolutely spectacular. It still looks nice now, but that colour's starting to offend my eyes ever so slightly. Um, so yeah, we've not really touched that. Um, I haven't had to touch this. Uh, I had a few issues with it. Um, I've just had to square this off because for whatever reason it wasn't mapping the um, it wasn't mapping the floor space for the aardvark which was really strange to me so yeah that was a bit of an issue so I've had to square that off and that seemed to sort the problem out and then also I put in a water point over there because you will remember me saying in the build episode that we didn't actually put any body of water in here um, and um, I actually had a dehydration problem with the animals which was um, a complete um, a very annoying thing to have to deal with um, because uh, with JCP we played with all the kind of rules off didn't we but with this one I am trying to go for that realism and leaving certain things in so yeah it was one of those things but um, but I managed to sort it out pretty quickly so yeah that other than that I've not really changed that hab too much I've added a few plants over here because I just felt like it was a bit a bit empty. Um, I haven't got round to doing the um, boards. I'm going to throw it out there. I've done none of the boards for the new Hab today either. They are a time-consuming thing. They really, really are. Um, they're so time-consuming. I've actually got a member of the community 
making the map for the zoo rather than me doing it myself and they actually got in touch with me and offered to help and I very much appreciated it and uh, they're in the process of kind of building the map because there's going to be spots in the zoo where I'm going to have the map so people can kind of navigate their way around the zoo or at least it's going to look like it's a map um, for the zoo. Um, so yeah, um, not really done too much to th that, not, not touched that yet. And then as far as the warthog habitat is concerned, not a lot's changed other than this little section here, but a lot of that is because I've built this, which we will come to in a moment. Um, but I've actually properly put that fence in now, uh, at the back and then we've got this fence and then I just kind of filled it in with, um, some stone and some wood and, uh, yeah, it's really, really looks nice and it's come together now so i'm um, really really happy with it and then i kind of finished off all the planting in this space um because all of that around there has all been squared off as well so what i'm what i do really like is that the terrain uh, in this part of the zoo it is all over the gaff like the, it, at times it looks flat especially like where the walking areas but where all the plants are and the backstage and all that like it's it really is all over the place and that's that's a lot more natural that's kind of what you want to go with and you know like all of these steps and whatnot and the way it moves and you're going to see with the gemsbok habitat we've done it uh, done it over there as well but you know you can see the way all the plants are and they just in all the wood and it just feels it feels tastefully themed is what I would say. I'm not really one for theming areas, but um but I feel like um I feel like I'm doing an alright job at the moment. I, I really like the way that this part of the zoo um is looking. Now what I'm gonna do is just take you backstage briefly and talk about some of the back lot stuff that I've been doing. Now you're gonna see uh, some more plants along here. Um, we've brought this fence along because we kind of have reached the point where the road is going to turn and it's going to join up to that service gate and there is going to be a service gate the other side as well. Um, so it's kind of reached that point. As you can see, I haven't quite got it all finished off, but we're, we're working there. And then... Um, as part of the narrative that I started to build in the first few episodes, which I know I've kind of abandoned the narrative, but I'm going to be talking about that in the what's happened next, because um, I do plan to kind of bring a story back to Tropical Wings um, because I, I've not been doing too much of that. But part of the narrative early on was that we would beautify the canal as a result of building the zoo. And so, as you can see, I have begun work on getting rid of concrete, really banking um banking all of this we're going to really heavily fill it in with foliage so it kind of looks like these areas do over here uh get get all vines and we're really really going to make it look beautiful and we're, we're kind of going to do that all the way along what on earth that is strange why that is there i'm not going to get rid of it now but i will do that is very very odd anyway we're going to continue to do that like all the way along basically is uh is what we're going to do um and so um it will look really nice eventually and also like the zoo as well isn't going to take up all this room i've decided that i'm going to come in a bit and then go and then we're going to put a forested area in like back here and things like that like because i just don't think we will really require all of the room back here anyway so um yeah that beautification work starts Started. As you can see, I've started, um, you know, putting service sections and bits and bobs in, but they take a lot of time. And um, I'm sure anyone that plays the game the way I do, where you build for realism, it, it's very monotonous work. It, it, it becomes very, very taxing and very boring very quickly, unfortunately, this stuff. But it has to be done to make the zoo... Um, feel at one with you know all all the areas and um to, to really really hammer that realism home you kind of need to add areas like that so um yeah it's it's work that's continuing and obviously i've 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 joined all this up and i've kind of put a new route back here as well so <clears throat> Excuse me for clearing the throat. I'm still getting over that cough, believe it or not. Um, so yeah, rather than uh, just having this one entrance here, we now have a secondary entrance um, and you access it this way. Now you can, they can actually use this. What I've done is I've used that two meter path trick. So we've done a thinner path because I didn't want a really big path going all the way through and cutting through the zoo. But essentially, if you go this way, as you can see, this bit back here isn't quite finished. We're going to get into the hab on its own. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to, you know, hammer home some lush vegetation and whatnot to kind of disguise things from uh, behind the scenes and whatnot uh, of for certain habitats. But as you kind of work down this way, you're going to see it kind of uh, takes a little turn here and then it continues um, going this way. So this side is the Gemsbok. 
This side is your warthogs. So, um, yeah, you can kind of like it all fills at one. Um, our zookeepers can look through and make sure everything's uh, okay. And then you continue going this way, and then we get to this little section. And uh, what this is, is it's, it's just kind of like a little uh, a little storage uh, section, a little, a, a little small area where you could potentially pick up some... Um, you know, some um, items to use for cleaning up and that sort of stuff. And there's also the part there to check on the meerkats because that's like a little sleeping den. So um, that's uh, that's like a little area to check on them. But it's just a quick way to come and grab some stuff, like if you were going to go and do like the meerkats and the aardvark or if you just needed to go and, you know, fix something relatively quickly. I've just got this like little point here that our... That our um, that our staff can use and stuff like that so yeah i thought that was really interesting it, and it was just a nice way to kind of like finish off uh the back back of the warthogs and whatnot and uh and it's cool as well because you know i'm going to show you in uh, you know as we go along from certain viewpoints you can see things and the, the, I think the key is a lot of backlot areas that they are hidden from the guests, like you know, the, a, a lot of it, but some of it you can see. You know, if, if you go to any zoo, I've been looking at lots of images, and you just can't hide everything 100% all the time. And so, um, you know, as a result, you do see stuff, but I, I'm starting to like really like that sort of thing. And then if you go this way, there is a, there is a gate here, and then you go through said gate. And I've planted this area up heavier than i have all this stuff back here and the reason i've done that is because this is guest facing we kind of wanted to disguise this a little bit but you're going to see it's not disguised fully and then uh you yeah, know this is just that gate there for access for the staff and then you continue to come this way and then you come out here and you come out basically where the aardvark and the meerkats are that way and then the gemsbok are that way what i want to say to you guys again as well is this window here um i'm going to be making a slight change to it because i think it's quite large i actually think i'm gonna bring a piece up a little bit there uh just at the bottom and then have the window at the top um but i still like it i just feel like it needs a little bit of work um but yeah um, that's that and then um, yeah if we turn this way we would be off to see the Gemsbok ladies and gents and I guess we might as well just do that now I am going to be putting a little um, gate on there I just um, I just forgot about it to be honest with you and I haven't got around to it yet but yeah I'm going to put the gate on there so if we go around this way I'm just going to zoom out so you can take a good look at it um, first and um you're, you're going to see, I've done a bit more than just the habitat. I've done like a nice little seated area. I'm going to explain more about the purpose of that um, in the latter part of the video and then in the what's happening next because it's actually going to have a knock-on effect to something else that we're going to be building as part of um, this area. But I've got all the planting in. I've got some nice seat in. I really added some trees, like a tr nice tree line in the centre of the path as well um, without going over the top. Um, and then, yeah, that nice seated area. We've got a raised platform viewing area. We've got two lower viewing areas. Um, I've gone with a design um, I see used a lot uh, on this sort of habitat where it's heavy on sort of like stone and rocks and then a load of logs and that sort of design so that it, A, stops the animals being able to escape but also stops them being able to eat any foliage that you do around the edge. Also inside the habitat, um, there's there's protectors for, for all of the foliage, um, whether that be the use of wood or whether it be stone. Those two bits in the middle are actually protectors but I've just kind of like used an assortment of stone you're going to see there is a little water pond there as well as part of this habitat it's kind of sat underneath that viewing area i kind of like doing that i think that's a nice kind of like way to do it because you can see the water um and it draws the animals in doesn't it because they would drink the water and whatnot um and then obviously um yeah then i've gone with a mixture of sand and grass because from all the images i was looking at that seemed to be the most popular choice and i quite like that we've got um, two holding pens I'll explain those and uh, yeah as far as the fence design is concerned I've gone a very similar route to how I have with the warthogs but I haven't had to go as over the top but that's kind of like an overview of um, of the habitat but now let's jump in and take a look now I'm going to show you the hard shelter first um, because I kind of did a little sneak peek on discord uh, this week letting people see the inside what I would say is if you're not a member of the discord yet and you want to stay up to date with all things tropical wings or the channel in general uh, then feel free to go to the description below click on the link and follow and um you know that'll be um that'll be a good way for you to kind of like get involved um 
a good way for you guys to get involved in in the build um, because you know as much as I'm not building stuff that you guys uh, are suggesting uh, your opinions on my ideas are always helpful uh, and it's always good to kind of bounce feedback as well and um, bounce feedback off you guys because it does help with the build process so yeah really appreciate appreciate that and also you get to see sneaky little previews of certain things that i'm doing so as far as the uh, back area is concerned you're going to see it isn't quite finished um i've got a little bit of fence to do here um like i like i say gang i, ju I just ran out of time and uh, it was one of those things so um yeah it's, it's they're little jobs that i'll be able to get done like ready for the next episode but um but yeah the fence just needs finishing off here probably a bit of plant and whatnot and then we'll be hey presto sorted this is as good as done uh, i just need to add the gutter in uh, which is a big thing that i've completely forgotten about but i do need to get the gutter in sorted out on this building um, i need to get all of the things like solar panels and ventilation and that sorted as well didn't get around to doing that but other than that it is pretty much done uh, i've got this little lean to area here i think this will be good for like loads of storage and and stuff like that um so yeah we got that and then this is basically the part where the zookeeper uh, would come in um i've got to get all the lights and that sorted in here but this is kind of like the first room so there would be like tools and there's going to be loads of loads of stuff added in here at a later date but as i say every episode i'm kind of holding off on those details until the very end to kind of save the piece count and whatnot and uh save any issues we might get with um the game getting laggy and and stuff like that believe it or not the game still runs pretty well when i press play so i'm kind of happy about that so we go in this way and this is the stables uh, that i've built for our our gemsbok uh, ladies and gents and I, I absolutely love it i've gone with a very similar design to kind of what we've done with the warthogs and the um and the uh, hyenas, uh, where the, the look of it, at least. Um, the, the thing is, I want everything to kind of feel and look the same because that's kind of, that's then, it's the signature of that zoo, isn't it? We kind of want tropical wings to feel and look a certain way. So, um, yeah, I'm kind of trying to follow suit. And someone actually, actually said on Discord that they could tell it was one of my builds. And I actually love that. I love the fact that they looked at something and they're like, yep, yeah, Dan, Dan built that. That looks like something he built. And so it, it, it kind of um, hammers home that I am starting to find a style and to, uh, starting to find a, a way of doing things. Um, and so what we've done is we've got two stables uh, just in case we ever need any separation in case a baby was born and and stuff like that. Um, I don't know why that's like that because it wasn't like that. Um, so yeah, I'll need to. I will need to sort that out, won't I? Um, I'll do that at a later date. It's not a problem. I was messing around with the walls before I jumped on because they were a bit janky and all over the place. And uh, and um, yeah, I seem to have exposed a few bits and bobs now. So it is what it is. But anyway, these are kind of like the switch system that we use for our for our doors here. So we've got that this side, and then at the other end, we've got one for the for the main door to the stables. Now, not all stables would, would have this sort of technology, but we're going with a really modern zoo, aren't we? So I thought we might as well splurge and have all of this stuff um, in here. Lots of stuff needs adding in here. I am gonna be honest with you. Um, the main structure of it's complete, but we do need a load of stuff in here. We probably need some feeders on the wall, uh, or at least something to represent that, and we probably need a, a bunch of stuff in here just to kind of decorate it. I don't want it to be like i don't want too much stuff in here because obviously this is a, the way our animals walk to go into their stable so we don't want to go too crazy but um but yeah you can see actually one of them is in here using it and you can see the sort of space now as well that we're dealing with for the animals so yeah it's kind of it's built to kind of have like three or four per stable and as you can see they'd have, they'd have more than enough room um for it to be that way lighting's done slightly differently in here i wanted to go with a bit of a different design rather than continuing on the same thing that i've been doing um but but uh but yeah i really really like the way it looks um so now we're just going to step outside and i'm going to show you how this hab works with regards to the back lot section of it now with the warthogs they go into theirs and then they go out a separate door um to go to their back lot but where these guys are concerned they actually have like a separate um runway so they have like a separate walkthrough part so you could actually force animals into this part have this door closed and that open and you would force them out and then close that uh, and you could even hold them in this area 
if you needed to as well. Um, so yeah, I've just done it a very slightly different way. Um, and so yeah, that's kind of like continued on that very similar design to all the other buildings that we've um, that we've been doing as well. And uh, so yeah, they've got the fence at the back and the fence at the front and the gate at the front. And obviously. The fence is a bit fancier at the front made out of wood because obviously that's the guest facing stuff. So you're always going to theme what the guests can see, but the stuff the guests can't see, uh, you just wouldn't spend the money um, because it would cost more to theme. So you just hold back, you save the money and you go in a different route. So what I'm saying is like, if you look at the front of the building, it's really heavily themed. But then if you go out the back, you can see that it is just, um, you know, it looks very, very different because we just don't need it to be as as snazzy i guess you could say um at the back of the habitat so if we step in to the hab now so you can have a, a good look at um you know this part of the habitat and i'll explain what's going on and i'm also going to explain that there are a couple of bits missing so this little bit here is another holding pen um and when i was doing a bit of reading they actually have little pens like this put together just in case like any young are born and whatnot and it's just easier to put the young in there and 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 deal with them but it's also a good way to kind of like separate animals if you ever need to as well so it's just a secondary holding area and one that's a bit smaller um so that you could you look at the animal maybe up close and personal a little bit easier we've kind of got this bit here which was kind of intended as kind of like an eating area and i was going to put like a lean to off the back with a bit of shade but i decided against it i've, I've left the left the food area there but i've just decided against it but what i am going to do because of this part here and because the guests can can see this and this is very heavy back lot what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a little section here that's like a shaded area that the animal can go to um, I just didn't get around to designing something I'm actually considering doing a very similar design to what I did in JCP which is with these tarp kind of things on like a wooden structure because I think it might look quite nice and it'll bring something different to the habitat um, but yeah I just need to put like a little a little lean-to thing now I've gone with the wood design here because the other side is back lot and there isn't a lot of room to go crazy with the foliage and I'm probably just gonna put a few trees along here nothing too mad um so yeah we've got that and then as i was saying you can see all the protectors are in place to kind of protect all of the plants uh and a lot of that is because the gemsbot would 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 go to work on them um so yeah i've done it on all the plants and then we've got these two areas in the middle where i haven't used the protectors but we've used rocks um so yeah the rocks would deter the animals from climbing in there basically and ruining all the plants there's still nothing to say they can't get at the branches and and some of the some of the leaves but they can't wreck the the wooden stuff on the on the trees uh, if we flip it around you can see this is like their little water area and really this is more for um the guests and the way the guests would um would view it uh, up on their kind of raised platform that we'll take a, a better look at um in a moment but um but yeah this is just like a just like a little water area for them to come and uh, get a drink have a little sploosh and a splash and uh, as you can see i've kind of gone with that mud that mud design again on the, uh, the edge of our pool and the bottom's concrete um, just because it'd be easier to drain and, and wash and all that good stuff um, and then if we look at the um, other two viewing areas you can see what I was talking about with the heavy rocks um, there is some fake stuff in there just to kind of like get the general shape but I've actually gone a bit more natural with this one and uh, gone with rocks and uh, logs and whatnot that would stop the animals from like climbing up and also destroying all of the plant life and whatnot that is along there um, as you can see to separate the two viewing areas I did this big rocky area here with um, some bushes as well that are all protected and then again we've gone all heavy with the with the uh, rocks and whatnot around here and the protectors and that's mainly just so they can't get those wooden fences and uh, like the same way they can't get them at them over there because the wood and the rocks kind of stop them from doing so so they basically can't wreck any of their habitat some people might think that the metal fences are maybe a bit heavy for these animals but based on a lot of the stuff I was looking at, these are the fences they sort of go with. And believe it or not, zoos do go with these fences a hell of a lot, especially towards the back of the habitats where the guests are not facing, where it doesn't really need to be as pretty because they're strong and they withstand the test of time um, a, a bit more than a wooden fence would. End of the day, you have to continue to treat wood, whereas you, you don't really need to do that with, uh, with, with things like metals and whatnot. 
But um, if we just take a look at the kind of um, guest areas, as you can see, that was the bit I was talking about. That was the uh, you know the behind the scenes area, um, and you can see it like that there. Um, but as far as like the guests are concerned, like if you was coming in this way, uh, you would go this way, and so you got one viewing area here. Um, so to kind of like have a look at the habitat. What's kind of cool is that uh, is that you can see all the buildings and whatnot in the background. Um, I actually kind of like that. And then you come around this way. You have got another viewing area here, which gives you a bit more of a general look. Like you can see a bit more of the uh, of the habitat, and I think it looks really really cool. And then you continue to come round, and then you actually go up a level now. Um, so we've got a smooth kind of like banked um, you know ramp that comes up this way, and then you can come over here. And uh, you can kind of look out on the uh, on the habitat, and you get a really, really good view of uh, of the hab and everything that's going on. Um, and I think it just looks really, really cool. But you kind of you still kind of get to see the animals relatively close, um, which I like as well. You get the water at the bottom, and um, and yeah, I think it looks pretty cool. Now, some people might think this might look like we've got a lot of wasted room here. The the path actually starts starts back here and um and the thing with this as well um this would just be like a safety thing um you know I'm, I'm actually might put like a secondary sort of little mini fence across the bottom like almost like a grate along the along the bottom there but also it might even be a good place for like a zookeeper to come and talk to the guests potentially so you just don't know but it was just a safety thing and uh just to kind of uh, disguise some ugliness as well and then the last thing we really need to talk about is um just disguising areas so you know, you can't really see much of the back lot area. Like, you can see over that fence and in there. Um, but there is going to be foliage and whatnot that's going to kind of disguise it, um, you know, as we go along. Again, you're disguising it all here. Um, you know, we are actually going to bring this fence all the way, um, probably to about here, because there's going to be that... that um, that service gate that's going to go along there and one's going to go along there. We're going to do it very different to what we've done over that side. It's probably just going to be a bit more of a generic kind of wooden gate um, there and there. And then uh, I decided as well, because of the way that this kind of all, the way that this all came together, uh, I've done this nice little planted section in here just to give us some shade and a bit of colour uh, in the area. And then I've done this little seated area here with um, with a, a bit of a different floor just to kind of change it up, break the grey up a little bit. Um, but it kind of just presented itself and it was too good to turn down to get some benches and uh, get another food store uh, you know, in here, um, because the, the other, the last seated area we've got is like over here, and believe it or not, that's the last bathrooms we've got, so bathrooms is something we probably need to think about uh, sooner rather than later, um, where this area is concerned, but you know what, I, I really love the way that this whole area is coming together, like Adventure Africa is, is slowly becoming kind of like my favourite part of this project, and the favourite part of this zoo at the minute, and what's nice as well is when you look at this when you look at the habitat like that and you can see the church in the background you can see the you can see the high-rise buildings just peering over the trees um i just think it looks magical at the minute and that's the whole point of this city zoo build is it's not just about the the zoo itself but it's about it's about you know seeing stuff in the background you know like when you when you look at um you know you look at the meerkats for instance from here and you look and you can see the buildings in the background you know it really makes you feel like your zoo is at one with the city that it's built in and that was that was the whole point really but um there's not really anything else i need to cover where this habitat's concerned but instead we just move on now and we talk about what's going to happen next so my friends, um, let's just quickly cover what's going to happen next. I don't want to be don't want this to be too long, too convoluted. It's going to be pretty basic, basically. So um, we've got a couple bit, a few, a couple of bits more to do in Adventure Africa, and then I'm going to call it um, a day on Adventure Africa for a few episodes. But the way the next uh, couple of episodes are going to work are are as follows, basically. So next episode will be the next part of Adventure Africa and essentially the last part of Adventure Africa until we take a break. Um, I, the reason I want to take a break is because this will be polished off quite nicely because this whole area will all be filled in and it'll be nice and then it will just give us a chance to pop on over here and just do something 
over over this side because because I, I really want to start you know adding some animals uh, you know I'm thinking about potentially even doing the sea lions or the otters or the penguins or just something just something a bit different basically and uh, jumping back over there um, before then coming back over here and finishing off Adventure Africa because um, you know I did say I wanted to finish it but I just think taking a break for maybe two or three episodes might be great but next episode is just going to be the final part of this part of Adventure Africa and what we're going to do is I'm going to tie tie in all the bits I haven't done so get the guttering on get this bit all uh, sorted out get all the planting in that I need to get in um, you know finish off these gates get all of the all the information um, boards done and all that stuff as well and then once all that's done then I can move on and get the last two bits done for this part of Adventure Africa and they're going to be a restaurant and the Fennet Fox so that's kind of one of the reasons I've put this in here as well because it's going to be an overflow area for the restaurant so if you can't sit inside or you can't sit on the seated area that I'm going to have over at the restaurant you there's a little overflow there that people can sit at um, and I think that'll be you know that'll, be, that'll start to appear really important that little overflow as time goes on but um, I've got an idea for a restaurant that I'm actually going to do it slightly raised up and we're going to do a raised seated area and so it's going to overlook the Gems Bock and it's going to overlook the Fennet Fox and you might even be able to see the meerkats in the in the distance and you might even be able to see some of the other animals as well because of the level that I'm raising it to so we're going to raise that up um, so it's going to have a raised seated area as well and uh, then it's going to next to it is going to be the Fennec Fox so I've got an idea for that where I'm going to do an indoor kind of viewing area of part of its um, den um, that's going to connect to its back lot area essentially i'm going to do it slightly different to how i've done the meerkats because we don't want everything to appear the same um it's only going to be a small building but it is going to be like an internal section of it and it'll be part of its back lot area um, again i think the fennet fox probably doesn't need to be much bigger than this um, so we'll probably be able to squeeze it in here and then the restaurant is going to be kind of like this bit here with its seated area and whatnot need to bring this road down need to continue this path along and then we'll just tie up all the plant in and uh, and then it will look amazing and this part will be done um, just to give you kind of like a little quick sneak preview of the restaurant because I've started it started the fascia of the restaurant anyway because I wanted to get an idea on style and uh, yeah this is kind of what I'm going with because I'm theming but I'm tastefully theming I don't want to go too over the top so uh so yeah I kind of gone with this design and I think it it looks pretty good um and then yeah it'll just be a case of um getting the rest of the building done getting all the internals done getting it looking the way I want it to look and then um and then getting all the seated area done I'll probably do the restaurant first uh, and then I'll know what space I'm left with for the uh with, with for the Fennet Fox and then uh yeah and then everything else will be tied up and then um, essentially once that's done we'll do an episode on it and then the episode after that one is going to be a cinematic episode um, someone's asked me recently if I would mind just kind of like showing off the zoo uh, every now and then so what I'm thinking of doing is maybe every kind of like eight to ten episodes I might do a cinematic from now on because um, the zoo's kind of getting to the point where there's so much going on there's so many animals to look at and it is evolving as it goes on it, it, it might be cool to kind of like do a cinematic and show the zoo off a bit more regularly so I'm going to try and do that so not next episode but the one after that we'll do a cinematic and then after that episode um i guess we'll talk about it a bit more nearer the time but after that then we will start kind of like cracking on over here my idea actually um is to is to get this get this corner finished um that's what i would like to do next kind of like from this point here up to here i'd like to get all that finished um i kind of got the ideas for the otters to go there overnight i've got ideas for the sea lions to go here and then um i've got an idea for maybe the one of the penguin species to go um in here um because we're kind of doing this water world um you know oceans and rivers kind of section aren't we um but yeah it might be interesting to get that tied up and then once we've done that then we can move on with other things but i'm just loving the direction the project's going really enjoying it and just love jumping in and building every single time and so there you have it my friends we're done and dusted for another episode of tropical wing zoo i really hope you've enjoyed the episode let me know in the comment section below what you made of the gemsbok habitat all the additions to the back lot and my future plans over the next uh, two or three episodes as well uh, if you're new around here please consider hitting that subscribe button because it's the best way to support the channel i am currently trying to race towards 3000 
thousand before Christmas. I don't think I'm going to do it, but it's good to have targets, my friend. So that's what I'm trying to get to. So make sure you have a little uh, a little touch on that subscribe button if you are not yet subscribed and you watch my stuff all the time. Also, my friends, drop a like on the video. Very much appreciated. The more likes I get, the more chance there is, and more people seeing my little pocket of the internet. And uh, once again, I'll bring you back to it. But check out the description box if you want to, uh, you know, be a, become a member of the Discord uh, and get involved with the community there. And also, you'll find a load of other stuff as well that you can take a look at but my friends i am done and dusted i want you to all enjoy it the rest of your day okay i know you've really enjoyed this last you know 35 40 minutes i know you're loving the zoo but now go and enjoy the rest of your day okay stay safe stay humble see you on the next one <laughs>